Hey, what's going on out there, Spotlight Faithful? It's your main man, Tommy, on the spot. We are currently on the road again. Uh, crazy little time here for myself. I'm back and forth all over the place. I uh, did a couple of days down in the Poconos with the fam, and then I'm shooting back up to Brooklyn as we speak um, for a couple days of work, which is lame, but then I will be shooting back down in the Poconos on a Wednesday afternoon, so back with you guys on a Monday morning, and despite being away on a family vacation, I did catch most of Money in the Bank uh, live on the WWE Network. I didn't watch it live, I watched it on delay, uh, but I thought it was, uh, you know, it's, I gotta give them credit, because for me at least, Money in the Bank has become, you know, appointment viewing to a certain extent. You wanna see that show, it's become a pretty big deal. Uh, through the years, you look back at Money in the Bank 2011 with all of the CM Punk stuff, Look back at Money in the Bank 2013 with uh, uh, that. That to me is a really underrated show with Mark Henry and John Cena and uh, I, Damian Sandow winning, and then later on Paul Heyman turning on CM Punk. There's always in each show something uh, I feel like pretty newsworthy going on, and so it's become a pretty important show. Going into the show, I actually thought uh, to add importance to it, they should have made this a dual brand pay per view, but it wasn't in the cards. Instead, a SmackDown only show. Uh, but I did like the fact that they did build up the fact that there were uh, two Money in the Bank matches, obviously one for the men and one for the women. Uh, but in looking back at the show, ah, I mean, has there been de be better Money in the Bank shows? Absolutely. Has there been worse Money in the Bank shows? Yeah, there probably has been. Uh, but with that being said, in looking back at everything that happened uh, last night on the show, I think that one of the number one things, one of the things that really jumps out at me and again, uh, obviously, if you're looking on this, you've seen the show, uh, so I'm not giving any spoilers away at this point uh, the day after, but there was only one baby face of the announced and advertised matches that was victorious last night, and that was Naomi. And uh, I feel like something can be said for a show like that. You don't necessarily... I mean, yes, there, there's definitely a time where the heel or the villain can become victorious, but WWE constantly says that they... Yes, they tell stories, but they also put smiles on people's faces. And if one babyface of the advertised matches, with the exception of the pre-show, is winning in Naomi, in a weird way, it's kind of like every single match is a bit of a disappointment. You had Carmella win. You had Baron Corbin win. And I will say, heels winning the Money in the Bank briefcase match, Money in the Bank briefcases, does make for more sense uh, because then they could take advantage. They could show up at the inopportune time, so to speak, when the babyface is in peril. So that makes sense, and it makes sense that, you know, Baron Corbin and Carmella would get that because they're both those, like, uh, kind of smarmy-type heels that are on the rise. So it makes sense for them to get the money in the bank. But then you also had Jinder Mahal win, and he was able to um, uh, retain it in Randy Orton's hometown. And then you also had uh, the Usos, even though they may have lost the match by DQ, so I guess the New Day were victorious, but it was more of a schmoz finish with a non-finish and the Usos getting counted out. So I feel like with so many, you know, kind of shifty finishes and so many things going on, uh, such as, you know, Ellsworth climbing up the ladder. I like James Ellsworth. I think he plays his role really well, and he's been awesome since he's came up to the SmackDown roster. That being said, do we really need him climbing up and winning the briefcase and throwing it down to Carmella when this is being built as such a history-making type thing for the woman of SmackDown and for the woman in general? Ah, not really. Uh, do do we necessarily need 100 interferences in the... I mean, you know the Randy Orton Jinder Mahal match, that's how it was going to be, but that kind of puts a damper on it. Uh, you know, j j if Jinder beats Orton straight up and there's no interferences, there's no nothing, that, that's kind of a big it's kind of a big story. But with all, this, all, the, in, all the, you know, the Singh brothers interfering and everything, now you're kind of looking for, you know, a cage match or, you know, maybe they bring back the Punjabi prison match. That's been rumored. Uh, so... You're just kind of continuing to tell the story. So I thought due to the finishes and due to, you know, again, the heels winning every single match, for the most part, you were kind of left as a, a bit of a downer of a show. That being said, I thought all the matches were good. I didn't think there was a, a bad match on the show. Even Lana, excuse me, even Lana, I thought, did really well. All things considered, it's only her second match, and here she comes uh, going up against Naomi. I thought that match was way better than anyone could have realistically expected. But at the same time, uh, you know, I did, don't know that Lana needed to be 
necessarily in that spot, uh, but it'll be interesting to see where she goes from here. Uh, but one moment in particular where I feel like, ah, man, you know, sometimes you can kind of change things up a bit. Uh, there was a moment in the Shinsuke Nakamura match where Nakamura was uh, obviously the main event. Nakamura was taken out early. When he came back 22 minutes into that match and the crowd was just erupting, it was kind of like, man, this dude is like, he is a major major star and uh, maybe you pull the trigger on him for that or maybe you continue to build it I mean who knows uh, obviously they, they 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 may know better but I felt like that would have been a moment right there if he came back and he won the money in the bank briefcase won the big match that would have been super cool uh, but it was not to be though I did think there was magic there between him and AJ Styles that's going to be a lot of fun to watch if indeed that's where they're going and it looks like it might be that is going to be fun whenever they get to it. They've had some great matches in Japan, and I can't wait to see them hopefully bring some of that maybe maybe to the Barclays Center for SummerSlam or maybe somewhere thereafter. Uh, and then the last thing I want to touch on, Mike and Maria Kanellis debuted last night for WWE. I guess Maria returning for WWE, kind of in this role with her having him taking her last name, the two being just completely in love and smitten with one another, and... Uh, I'm excited to see them up there. It's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Mike Bennett's work. I know a lot of people seem a little iffy on him, but hey, I mean, he's somebody new. Hopefully they continue to, you know, they continue to develop him and, uh, and, and you know, maybe he comes up, he, he, he goes in a bit of a feud with Ty Dillinger, it gives Ty something to do who hasn't really been on doing much since coming up. So always good to kind of build that, build that brand a bit and to build the, the undercard from up. So Hey, I mean, uh, I'm excited to see where they go from there. Maria came off like a star and uh, has an unbelievable presence. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I thought they kind of came out of nowhere there. It was good to see them get their own spotlight, pun intended, and uh, not to see how a lot of people were all about Maria joining the Money in the Bank. I like the way they did this. Um, you know, don't necessarily need to see her in the ring, but she does have a really good presence, and uh, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed what we saw last night. So that is going to do it for me on a little bit of a uh, shorter edition as I cross state lines here. The first edition of the Wrestling Drive where we're literally crossing lines. The big Welcome to New York sign is over there, which, eesh. But uh, we're on our way now into, to continue our day. Been on the road for quite some time and it's good to check in with all of you. But let me know what you thought about the Money in the Bank pay-per-view event. Did you like it? Was there things you didn't like about it? Were there things you thoroughly enjoyed about it? What was your favorite match on the show? Let me know in the comment section below or hit me up on the Twitter at Tommy on the spot or at daily underscore spotlight. If you're tuning into this YouTube page right now, there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming down the pike, a lot of wrestling related stuff, as well as some real life related vlog type stuff. It's gonna be fun. So check it out. And until next time, I will see, take it, I will say take it easy and everybody have a great week. Bye bye.